everybody, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. Today we have a very cool Brad Kozlowski Kohler Generators Ford Mustang, and this is the dual raced win version. So, uh, technically, this is only the second uh, next gen race ever. Granted, it wasn't you know a, a playoff berth win or anything. It was just a dual race, which does count for some points. But regardless, this was the first bout. Uh, or badge of honor, so to speak, for the RFK camp of the season. And without further ado, let's go and get it out of the box. Alrighty, folks, we're out of the good old box and check out this die cast. Let me tell you, man, this paint scheme is just incredible. I love this. Uh, it's it's almost like a retro paint scheme to me. It, it gives me some um, early 90s Daryl Waltrip Western Auto vibes with the silver numbers and just kind of having a white. Uh, and a gradient pattern style paint scheme. It just really reminds you of that paint scheme for some odd reason. Like, I truly feel like this car could have ran the 90s and it, it would have fit in very, very well. So let's go to the nose of the die cast here. Of course, we picked this one up from our friends at Circle B. You can too. And uh, check out the promo code down below, guys, and help you save on shipping. You got Kohler generators here. You do see some specs, some dirt. No, that is not uh, a, a, a error on the diecast. This is a raced version, so you're you're going to see a few uh, nuances, and that's supposed to be there, so that's pretty cool. Go to the front of the diecast. With this being a next-gen car, obviously uh, grill tape is kind of a, a not allowed anymore, uh, so you don't expect to see any grill tape. Maybe on the brakes you might see some, but uh, for the most part, the fronts are going to be pretty consistent with a clean version. Uh, I will say, though, the headlights look significantly different. Let me grab another Ford... Uh, Mustang diecast and let's let's do a little comparison here check this out I don't know why but those lower headlights they look so much different on the Brad K I, I think I just never noticed them before to tell you the truth now they look they look exactly the same but for some reason to me when I first noticed them on this car they look very different so maybe I'm just tripping uh, y'all maybe I'm just tripping so you get number six uh, RFK Sunoco um, you can see a little bit of a, a mark on the splitter, which is really cool. You can see right here a little bit of like a tape mark so they can, you know, get the cl uh, clearance and the ground, uh, you know, set. I think that's really nice. So you go to the left side of the die cast here, guys, and uh, you have your very beautiful silver metallic number. I love that. So cool. If this does get made in the 164 Authentics line, obviously it's not going to have this. So if you're a big fan of these style numbers, you got to get it in the Gold Series. you got Brad Kozlowski. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. You got number 29, which I want to say was his dad's number, Bob Kozlowski. I want to say that was his truck number. I could be uh, mistaken on that one. Um, you got Ford, Kohler Generators. Not sure what that is. And you got Castrol. Uh, I got Kohler Generators once again. Fast and all. Uh, Simeons, whatever that is. Mac Tools. Got powered by Castrol. Got American Ethanol. Cup Series and Goodyear. So looking at this paint scheme here, guys, and the, the transition, you have like this dark, I mean, very, very dark navy blue. And you have this beautiful sky blue to a transition to a white. The whole car has kind of a semi-gloss satin finish to it. I don't know why, but it just, it's, it's retro, but it's modern at the same time. I don't know, don't know any other way to describe it, but it's it's a fantastic looking paint scheme. So you're the back of the car. You can see the, the the stripes a little bit off. I don't think this is race wear damage. I don't think someone you know bumped the back end of the car, bump drafting and uh, kind of you know shifted it off uh, off you know its center. I think that is unfortunately a decal nuance. You got RFK Kohler generators number six. Um, you can see the spoiler is very screwed up. Good news is, though, is that the pop rivet design we see on this is not only just for raced version diecast now. It's on the standard releases as well. And uh, believe it or not, guys, we have the standard release of this diecast. I'll quickly compare just the side real quick just to give you an idea of what this car really looks like. So what's interesting to me, I want to do this quick little comparison here. The number font is actually really different. To me, the, the, the dual-raced win looks so much better. Like, look how much taller the number is. It looks so much better. And on this one, you have the Powered by Castrol logo. You don't have that on the side. So if you're a die-cast collector and you're, you know, you're really finicky about your stuff, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to say the guy. I want to say it. I would get the raced version and use it as a normal primary paint scheme instead of this one because the way the number is. It's taller and it looks more proportioned uh, than the one on the bottom. 
That's my honest opinion. I would get this one instead, the, the dual raced win, and use it as your, your normal die cast. And if you know you're into the you know the small alternate differences for your paint schemes, um, the hood logo is significantly uh, the same. <laughs> but if you're into the small differences, you can see you know have the jack post arrow, but you have the Castrol decal here. You could you know have both of them and kind of swap them around, uh, so to speak, for your diecast series. The roof is uh, very similar as well. But honestly, I like the door number on the raced version much better. That you know, with it being a raced version diecast, they generally um, they base the paint scheme off the actual race car itself. They're not based on a render. Like if the render was made in December or January, and they made the car, well, guess what? It's going to be based off whatever it was in December and January when they sent it to the team. Well, guess what? When the race version comes out, they get exactly what was on the racetrack. So if, if the team made changes post, you know, you know, the template sent to Lionel or whatever, you're getting the exact version of it. And to me, this is the best version of this diecast. The numbers look better. The proportions. I like the castor oil decal here. So if you're in the market for this diecast and you're wanting a, a Brad Kozlowski primary for your, your collection or your diecast series... Guys, get the dual raced version. You can't even barely tell it's a raced version. There's just a few speckles right here on the hood, and that's only because the hood's white. You can really see the dirt and grime, and you have these little markings down here, which they look cool. You could sharpie them out if you wanted to, uh, but yeah, no doubt about it. I would recommend getting this one over that one. Let's go to the roof of the car. Once again, it's pretty same to uh, the normal uh, primary version of it. Didn't see any differences here, uh, but man, what a cool looking paint scheme, though. I love this paint scheme. It's just the gradient, the se the semi-gloss satin finish. Very nice. And I will say, though, the number font uh, really reminds me of the 90s Mark Martin uh, looks as well, which that's probably why it feels so retro at the same time. So you got Kohler Generators, Keselowski, and once again, Kohler Generators on the deck lid. So honestly, out of all the paint schemes on track is this a one of my favorite ones absolutely it really is like it out of all the primary cars this is one car i could look at every you know weekend that i'm able to watch you know nascar racing and say man i really like looking at this car if i had to be honest with you it's probably a 9.6 out of 10 it just it it's got everything going for it they use the whole side pod the whole hood gradient silver numbers it's got everything you know, when I look at cars like this, where they're well designed, it just it, it Keselowski has an eye for good looking race cars because all the RFK stuff has been really really nice this year, and I think that's a that's a huge improvement, uh, no doubt about it, guys. What a really cool looking diecast, and I believe we have another Keselowski car uh, up here in the studio. Let me try to find it real quick for you. Oh yeah, check this one out. Bam, the Castrol. Ford Mustang. I wish the roof had the metallic numbers, but that's besides the point. Oh, we almost dropped it there. That's That would have been bad. But you can see both of these cars, they look fantastic if you exclude the roof number. I mean, just look at that. The the, the gradients, the, the transitions, the shadows, three-dimensional accents. I mean, RFK Racing has had some of the best-looking paint schemes weekend and week out. No doubt about it, guys. So this is the dual win. Um, my honest opinion on the dual race, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. I mean, it was the worst dual race I've ever watched because nothing happened. All they did was run single file. They pitted and they ran pretty much single file again. Everyone was scared and timid to race each other. And then the the, the Daytona 500 happened and everyone went crazy because they were at the time there was a uh, a part shortage and everyone's you know oh my goodness let's not tear up our stuff. Um, that was actually a thing the part shortage and. I think that really um, affected the racing, unfortunately. So, luckily, they got that by, uh, you know, that passed them, and they went to Daytona, and this guy almost won, by the way, um, with this paint scheme. But, uh, yeah, the dual races, were, they could have been tremendously better, but the 500 certainly made up for that. But uh, I'm curious what y'all think, guys. Make sure to comment down below. I look forward to reading them, and I'm hoping you're having a swell day out there, guys. That's all for now. Diecast Buffet. Signing off.